People that suffer from mental health issues a lot of times do not know where to turn or who to call. Instead of calling 911, there is now a number to call for mental health issues. 988 debuted on Saturday, and now people from across the state can now call that number and get help. We talked to Lee Richardson, a licensed professional counselor and founder of the Brain Performance Center. And we're talking about uh, mental health. And mental health came, mental health cases are always coming up. If you look at uh, a lot of the homeless, especially here in Houston, one of the problems is, is, is mental health. And, and so what, what issues do you find with mental health? And how would, how would you, how would, you know, with cutbacks and everything, how would you try to, um, increase the amount of help that goes into mental health? Well, mental health has been an issue. It's increased to be an issue for the last 10 years. Before, before the pandemic, one out of four Americans over the age of 12 suffered from either a mental health issue or a substance abuse issue. So you add the, the pandemic on top of that, and that introduced a much higher level of stress, emotional trauma, and oftentimes physical trauma. And all of those things put the brain into a dysregulated state. Mental health is brain health. And that's how we start to get people better is we identify the brain is an organ just like the heart. If you hurt your leg and you're having a tough time walking, what's the first thing you do? You go to a doctor. If you get up and you feel like, man, I just can't get out of bed today. I just, I can't do it. What's the first thing you do? You have a nasty little conversation with yourself. Come on, man, power through. Or suck it up, buttercup. You know, You've got to make this happen. And what we've got to acknowledge is is that mental health is just as important as physical health. And, you know, it's okay to not be okay on a physical level. It needs to be okay to not be okay on a mental level, too. But what, what, at what point do you, do you seek help, though? And it's hard for a lot of people um, to know when that, that, time, that time comes. Well, you, you're right. And, and it's, there's not enough help out there right now for a lot of the people that need it the most. And that's something that hopefully we will be addressing. But, you know, hopefully you'll have a family or friends around you that can help you know when it's the right time to seek help. Because when you see a big change in somebody's behavior, you know, their sleep pattern changes, their their diet changes, their social interaction changes. You know, when you see changes in, a, in people's behavior, that's a red flag. There's something that's driving those changes. And sometimes just taking the time to ask, hey, how are you? You know, showing somebody that you care can can make them feel better. With, with mental health, and you can say seeking seeking um, medical attention, how hard is that when you don't have, especially uh, if you don't have a doctor or you can't afford you can't afford um, um, uh, medical help? Well, it's just about non-existent right now, and hopefully that will change with the new law that was passed on Saturday. Being able to dial 988 in Texas did adopt that law, so on one of the 21 states it did. But the problem is, is you got to have somebody to answer that phone when you call that phone number, and you know that that's something I think that as a social system we're struggling with. We've we've identified there's a huge need because not everybody has a doctor, not everybody has access, and many people that have access to insurance for their physical health. They either don't know that they have it for on a mental level or they're afraid to use it because of the stigma associated with it. Did you know 60% of the people that need mental health won't get it? And that on the average, someone will suffer from a mental health issue for 10 years, 10 years before they do reach out and do something about it. That's a decade, man. Talk about, talk about the 988 number and how that came about. And um, how can people reach out to it? And what happens when you do call? Well, the 988 number has been, you know, put in place to help address the mental health issue and to build off of the success of 911. I mean, there is a National Suicide Prevention Hotline. But, you know, oftentimes people aren't to that. Oh, I don't need that. I mean, I'm not ready to, you know, have you ever thought about suicide? Well, I've thought about it, but I'm not going to do it. So, you know, there's a big gap, and 988 is intended to fill that gap. The There has been dollars set aside to fund it, the crisis hotlines. And, and I, I see it as a huge advantage because typically when you call 911, what happens is the police are sent out. 
And the police may or may not have been trained in how to interact with a mental health issue. And so at least when you're calling 988, if you can connect and get the right connection, they're going to send someone out that will have a better and a, a better training level on how to deal with mental health. Because mental health can can look, you know, it's not just somebody depressed or anxious or schizophrenia and we're, when you hallucinate. There's a lot of physical movement involved. The brain loves to move. Um, and, you know, if a police officer comes, police officer drives up and sees somebody running around the yard and and of course there's going to be concerned. So I do think that 988 will, will be a better direction than 911. I think that it can build off of the success that 911 has had. I mean, I can already remember it. <laughs> and that's, I don't remember everything. So I think it will be easy to use. The big challenge is having somebody to pick up the phone. You mentioned law enforcement. Um, I know in Seattle, instead of um, when they were talking about um, cutting some of, some of the police functions, um, one thing that was added was uh, a mental hate, a mental <clears throat> a mental health uh, caseworkers that would go out instead of law enforcement going out, or or they would go out in support of law enforcement, and that that being helping um, uh, when you have cases, especially dealing with street people um, with mental with mental health issues, uh, having somebody that's a mental case. Um, that's a specialist in mental case, mental health, help out in those situations instead of uh, uh, law enforcement that's not sometimes not trained to deal with uh, mental case issues. Is that something that needs to be expanded? Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, I mean, the, the, for many people, seeing a police officer, that's very comforting. If you live on the streets, you see a police officer, that's probably very frightening because it probably means that you're, you're going to be asked to move on. So just seeing somebody that, you know, from a um, physical appearance doesn't intimidate you will be helpful. And I think that it is something that, you know, we have to create an awareness. The I wrote a book back in a couple of years ago, Turn Your Brain On to Get Your Game On. But, and the purpose of that book was for, to let people know it is okay to not be okay. We've got to create social change around the way that we view mental health. And that needs to be looked at on an organizational level, how organizations respond to their employees' need for mental health. It needs to be looked at on a social level. I mean, and educating individuals. I mean, we all play the shame and blame with that game with ourselves. Well, you know what, Lee? Shame on you. That didn't happen. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. It's all your fault. And once you start that negative thinking, that's what feeds mental health illness. The whole, the whole aspect of um, the 988 call, sometimes it's just not, um, uh, needing someone to talk to can go a long way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've had so many school shootings, and I've been talking a lot about that and doing a lot of research and read a study where a young man was ready to go. He had a plan in place. He was prepared to execute it. And someone, right before it was the ex- he was going to execute, came up and was kind to him and showed him some grace, and he didn't do it. So you're absolutely correct. Just having somebody that will listen to you, that makes you feel like, okay, well, somebody does care if I'm here. Somebody does care if I'm all right. And I encourage all your listeners to stop and think about that. If you see somebody, you can tell by the look on the face when somebody just needs a nice, hey, how you doing today? Hey, have a good day. Those few words can make a huge difference. Cool. So um, you said funding is a problem with the with the nine eight eight number. Um, if somebody calls, are we, oh, how are we going How many people do we have right now uh, staffing this? Uh, well, I don't know the exact number. I mean, I know that some states like Rhode Island, they're prepared to answer ninety percent of their calls. But think about the size of the state, Rhode Island, and the size of Texas. I mean, and just I mean statistically. If you look at the size difference, that's a, that's one factor. And Texas has not been a leader in mental health issues. Actually, we've ranked down in, at the bottom over the years. So what Texas has set aside for state funding, and, and of course there's federal funding too, but how those dollars drift in and get allocated is not a process that I'm familiar with. I encourage those that do know the, how that works to really pay attention and if you have a voice for mental health, please use it. 
here in the Dallas area, what are they doing in Dallas? Um, in the Dallas area, Dallas Fort Worth area, to, um, to 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 support mental health issues, especially dealing with the homeless. Well, you know, the homeless is a big deal, and, and Dallas has put a lot of issue in, into that because I can see a difference. And the, the Dallas is the mental health is is just as bad here as it is in Houston or anywhere else. And and as you said, those homeless people oftentimes it, it, it is mental health. And they don't want to be put on medication. And even if they do, they don't have access to get medication. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot that to be done. The Dallas has Mark Cuban is a big force in Dallas. And I have been very impressed with what he's done to get out and create awareness. Mental health matters. Um, I mean, it's great when you see Mark Cuban on TV and a T-shirt out there promoting mental health with people of color. That was Lee Richardson, a licensed professional counselor and founder of the Brain Performance Center.